untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a Blue-Red Wizards deck, one of the best decks in the format, now updated with Dominaria United, which introduced two copies of Sheevan Reef in our mana base, as well as two copies of Balmor Battle Mage Captain, a 2-mana 1-3 Legendary Bird Wizard with flying, saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, creatures you control get plus one plus so and gain a trample until end of turn. So great in any deck casting lots of cheap instants and sorceries, which is exactly what this deck is all about. Out. Belmar also synergizes very nicely with a Dreadhorde Arcanist, 2 mana 1 3 Trampling Wizard, that whenever it attacks, lets us cast an instant or sorcery card with mana value less than or equal to the Arcanist power from our graveyard without paying its mana cost and then exile it afterwards. So normally the Arcanist can only get back 1 mana spells from the graveyard, but if Belmar can increase its power, we can now start casting the 2 mana spells out of our graveyard as well, even potentially 3 mana if we can trigger Belmar multiple times. Another way to enable Arcanist is with Symmetry Sage, now a 1 mana 3 flyer after the alchemy changes, which can give a creature base power 3 until end of turn if we can enable Magecraft. So that's another way to get the Arcanist to 3 power, so it can get back our 3 drops like Wizard's Lightning out of the graveyard. And then we've got Soulscar Mage as another 1 mana wizard with prowess getting plus 1 plus 1 whenever we cast a non-creature spell, and also potentially turning damage into minus 1 minus 1 counters. And then we're rounding out our creatures with two copies of a Dragon's Rage Channeler, which is a shaman, not a wizard, so it's not going to enable wizard sliding, but still nice alongside our mentor's guidance, which we'll get to in a second. And then whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we get to surveil one, which can put additional cards into our graveyard, maybe enabling Arcanist. And if we have four or more card types among cards in our graveyard, we enabled Delirium, and then the channeler gets plus 2 plus 0 and has flying and attacks each combat if able, so that's also nerfed from originally being plus 2 plus 2. But we've got uh, four card types in this deck, pretty evenly split between them, so it's not too difficult to get an instant sorcery creature and land in our graveyard to enable channeler and just gives us a bit of extra card selection and another powerful one mana creature. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, we've got Consider as a cheap cantrip that can also put extra cards in Graveyard for Delirium and for Arcanist. We've got Fading Hope as a one-off bound spell, can be useful against some reanimator decks where the opponent might get back a creature that we cannot kill with burn spells, but then a Fading Hope can deal with it. And then a Pillar of Flame to complement our other burn spells, this also potentially exiling the creature in the process, can be useful against Arclight Phoenix and friends. And then a play with fire or one mana burn spell of choice, dealing two damage to any targets and letting us scry one if it targets the opponent. And then a reckless charge, another great synergy with a Dreadhorde Arcanist, giving a creature plus three plus so and haste until end of turn can also be flashed back for two and a red. So if we can give our Arcanist haste on turn three, we can attack with it right away and maybe flash back something expensive in the process. So we get immediate value basically, but can also just represent a ton of damage alongside cards like Symmetry Sage. Then we already mentioned Mentor's Guidance a few times, used to cost three mana, now only two mana thanks to the alchemy changes, a sorcery that lets us scry one and then draw a card, but if we cast it and control a shaman or wizard at the same time, we get to copy it as well. So now all of a sudden we get to scry one and draw a card twice, which is quite efficient for just two mana. Can also enable our magecraft on Symmetry Sage twice, which also counts copying a spell, and then can also potentially be flashed back with Arcanist out of the graveyard to generate an even bigger advantage. And then a Static Discharge is also awesome alongside Arcanist, deals 3 damage starting out at sorcery speed, nothing too fancy, but for each time we've cast it, the next copy will deal 1 more damage, and that also counts copies we cast out of the graveyard with Arcanist, so now all of a sudden it's dealing 4 damage, we might draw several copies, so this can easily end up dealing 5 damage by the end of the game. And then we also have the full set of Wizard's Lightning, getting a 2 mana discount if we control a wizard, so then it just turns into a Lightning Bolt, single red for 3 damage, incredibly efficient as well, and once again we can replay it with Arcanist if we can increase its power. And then our mana base also has a few goodies, two copies of Den of the Bugbear as a creature land, and Soaring City can be channeled to maybe bounce an opposing permanent, and then we've got an island and mountain in case of Field of Ruin, and then a whole host of blue-red dual lands that come into play untapped in the early turns, so Steam Vents, Spire Bluff, now the two copies of Sheevan Reef, and the blue-red Pathway, and then we also get to free roll Gigantha as our companion. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. 
we are on the draw with a great hand. Turn one, I have to decide between Soul Scar and Symmetry Sage, opponent on a life gain deck. Okay, um, could kill Soul Warden right now. I think we're fine letting it stay in play for a turn. And then probably play Soul Scar Mage, which we can immediately pump with a Symmetry Sage next turn if we'd like. Although more likely to want to play Arcanist. And then Symmetry Sage can uh, be played later. And can also maybe pump Arcanist right away to get back a more expensive spell. Moon Dancer could be annoying, just an Innkeeper. That's fine, so they're setting up for maybe a Collected Company next turn. Another Soul Warden. Alright, so there's no getting rid of their life gain enablers. At least not anytime soon, but we might be able to deal with the payoffs. Would like to keep up Play With Fire. Although playing Arcanist is also tempting, and now with Discharge, we should be able to handle a creature that gains plus one counters after gaining life, as we can maybe cast this twice. So, I think what that means is go to combats, attack with Soul Scar. If they block, we can easily kill all creatures and then play Arcanist. Opponent up to 23. I hope there's no Skyclave Apparition to exile Arcanist. And then if Scurry Oak or Heliod show up, we've got those covered. Alrighty. So... Now we can deal quite a bit of damage. Probably wanna just kill Soul Warden. If we can help it. So I could play with fire, flashback play with fire, killing both Soul Wardens. Which also makes it so Heliod doesn't turn into a creature right away. Although, still could be an issue if our opponent has a Scurry Oak next turn to combo off. So that's a reason to keep the instant speed play with fire available. Since we can't kill all the life gain enablers. So if that's the case, we may want to play Symmetry Sage, play Tapped Den, keep up, play with fire, and then do nothing, that feels kind of bad. So maybe consider, flashback, consider. And then Soul Scar can also attack. Find another Discharge. Mentor's Guidance isn't bad. Do we have time to cast it as a question? Yeah, I'll be kind of tied up next turn. With my mana, so I don't think I'll have time to cast Guidance. Would rather find more instant speed removal. Maybe a Reckless Charge would be good. Spire Bluff we can play right now. And then a Symmetry Sage we can add to the board. Okay, so we've got our Play With Fire to answer Scurry Oak. Which was the goal here. Opponent does get to grow Soul Warden up to 3 3. Can still kill it with Discharge. And there's Curry Oak. So this would be an infinite combo. He lead counter on Scurry Oak in response, play with fire. And then now we can try and clean up all of the life gain enablers. With double discharge. And then Symmetry Sage growing Arcanist lets us replay discharge out of the graveyard as well. Now with Wizard's Lightning we could also just discharge and lightning and keep the other discharge to maybe go face. So let's do that. And now our opponent won't be able to combo with Scurry Oak unless they hit it off a collected company. And uh, they can uh, get both a Scurry Oak and an enabler in play at the same time. Opponent is at 12. We were pretty close to just burning out the opponent and ignoring the creatures, but this seems safer. 
Still discharge in hand, can flash back another one and a guidance for card advantage. And yeah, they actually had another scurry oak, but that's not gonna do it for them. So this can go upstairs, trigger symmetry sage on arcanists. Then attack. And this dealing 5 damage now is pretty ridiculous. Alright, sweet. So yeah, the opponent had the combo all rolled up, but we made sure to play around it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's pretty decent. Soul Scar into Arcanist. Could maybe wait until turn 3 to give Arcanist haste with uh, Reckless Charge to get immediate value, so ideally we can use one of our burn spells on turn 2. Put under red-black. Might have a look and take away Arcanist. Nope, just a channeler. So yeah, going for Discharge might be the play, and then ideally pick up a red source next turn to enable Arcanist so we don't expose it to sorcery speed removal. Alright, Molten Impact kills Soulscar. And sadly, no lanes. We'll just replay Soulscar Mage. Really need Arcanist to get an attack in here to gain a small advantage. Liliana finishes off Soulscar Mage. This is my home, and I don't appreciate it when people touch my things. And no land. That's rough. Well, we can Guidance. And go digging. Don't think I want Channeler. Alright, there we go. Play that tapped. And then next turn we can maybe either just burn Liliana or set up the Reckless Charge. At least her opponent also has to discard here. And another channeler. Opponent does have two mana available, so they could easily have another removal spell. If I kill Liliana, it will give them four times for channeler. So I don't really want to go for Reckless Charge if I can help it. So maybe Balmore plus Wizard's Lightning. And then probably kill Liliana now anyways. Can't wait until their upkeep. See if they fire off a removal spell here. Fatal push. Molten impact also triggers. So let's kill Liliana. And, and then, yeah, hopefully they'll be tapped out to set up our Arcanist. Bone Crusher just cast, that's fine. Alright, so we get to connect here. And then I could go for either Static Discharge or Wizard's Lightning enough to kill the Giants. Go with a uh, Wizard's Lightning and keep Discharge for later, maybe. Play with Fire Answers Channeler. But I imagine Arcanist is gonna eat another removal spell here. Inquisition taking Play with Fire. Could still flash back Reckless Charge to gain access to the more expensive spells in our graveyard. Although, getting back an answer to Channeler is fine too. And then a Croxa, which can be escaped next turn, if they have their red mana for it. Another Wizard's Lightning, okay. So what if we Reckless Charge? This is 4 plus another 4 from uh, Discharge, puts them to 1. And then if they tap Springs, they're dead. So I think I like that idea. 
And then, of course, Lightning can finish them off as well. So we're not worried about Croxa now. And Liliana works, but we can still cast our Wizard's Lightning. So that should do it. Down to four we go. And lining to the face. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What could easily be a mirror match. Hands keepable. Could use maybe a reckless charge to go with Arcanist. For now, just lots of early removal. And we can uh, play with fire next turn, maybe. One's gonna play with fire our face, maybe just desperate for a second land, needs to scry. They've got Belmore, so that needs to be discharged. And then hope to dodge Arcanist plus Reckless Charge here. Alright, that looks like what they have. At least they don't have a card draw spell. So they're just gonna flash back maybe a play with fire or charge to deal the most amount of damage. We can kill Arcanists and then keep up Consider. And then try and find our own Reckless Charge so we can get immediate value of Arcanist instead of potentially exposing it to their own Discharge or Wizard's Lining. Right, they've got a Soulscar Mage, one card left over, which is a Mentor's Guidance to refuel, that's a good one. Okay, so opponent gets to dig pretty deep, two cards in hand, and we want to find a, a Reckless Charge to combine with Arcanist, or maybe some other removal for Soulscar. Reckless Charge, there it is. Times two even. So let's haste up our Arcanist. And then could just uh, go with Pillar of Flame here, Exile Soulscar Mage, or play with Fire, but we can maybe save that one to go face. And hope they didn't find an answer to Arcanist so we can keep attacking with it, but at the very least we can animate our den. Iteration. So we playing a mix of Guidance and Iteration, and it's very close. They're both incredibly powerful card draw spells. Alright, they exile the land. Do we get to untap with Arcanist? Looks like it. For single reds, unless they have a wizard in play. They won't have an answer. Okay, so I can get back either play with fire or consider if we are planning to animate then, although we have to watch out for another play with fire killing it. So in that case, maybe start with consider, see if we find a creature we can haste. Don't think I need another den. Play with fire. And then Probably just Reckless Charge Arcanists and uh, keep up play with fire and then flash back a burn spell. Or we could go with another Consider. Don't mind Discharge since if our opponent presents a 3 toughness creature we can play with fire and flash back play with fire to answer it. And this deals more damage in case they kill Arcanist. And then any creature off the top we can haste. Opponent passes, another discharge. Alright, that should do it if Arcanist can connect.
they've got a wizard lining. Fair enough. So in that case, I don't think I animate then. Or do I? Can put Gigantha in hand. This charge deals 5, play with fire 2. Yeah, it just feels likely for them to have another removal spell here. So let's just pass with our play with fire available. Does our opponent put Gigantha in hand, or are they going to start chucking Ramana Ruins at our face? Alright, opponent lets us untap. And yeah, we could try and haste Gigantha, which would also be a lethal. And unless they've got several Wizard's Lightnings here, or maybe a Fading Hope, we should be fine. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems pretty promising. Soul Scar into maybe a Balmor on two, and then unload all our burn spells. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one forest. And yeah, we'll hit for one, play Balmor. Opponent may be on elves, as we see a clan caller, so they're not off to a particularly impressive start. Don't even need to kill clan caller as it doesn't generate any extra mana. And we can attack past it. So guidance can find some more action. And probably don't need to consider. Should wait it to play my land, of course, in case we drew Spire Bluff. Don't think it's gonna matter too much. And then next turn, Discharge, plus play with Fire, pumps our team for two with Balmor. And is five damage to the face, potentially. So... Do I just have lethal if I kill Archdruid instead? I guess we'll find out. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen puts the opponent to one. Close enough. Probably don't need Arcanist. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, the Elves deck was not off to a particularly great start, and our hand was actually pretty good for the matchup. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing blue mana to go with Symmetry Sage. Although we still have some powerful options in hand. So it might be worth the risk. I'll try it. And most of our lands at this point produce blue. Turn one Soul Scar. Turn two maybe just play Arcanist instead of waiting for Reckless Charge. Well, found a Wizard's Lightning. Yeah, given that they didn't have a one-drop Wizards, it's mostly a Static Discharge that can kill Arcanist here on turn two. Just a Karizev, that's acceptable. So, hang on to a Reckless Charge and just Wizard's Lining. Wouldn't be flashing anything back, but that's okay. Rubber. Does not exile anything. Still missing our blue. Well, now I might want to Reckless Charge Arcanist just to get back Wizard's Lightning, or we can take another hit and just add another Arcanist to the board. Annex, okay, that we might want to kill with a flashbanked Lightning. And this may be representing a play with fire. Yeah, I mean, double Arcanist is unlikely to 
really do much since we're out of spells in the graveyard. So if they have it, they have it, but it was just a bluff. So now Soulscar Mage, Reckless Charge, needs to target Arcanist if we want to get back Wizard's Lining. And we can also get back Reckless Charge once again. And trigger Prowess a bunch, opponent taking 12, so they seem pretty dead. And all the spites, not finding our blue mana here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and it's quite promising. Symmetry Sage on one. And, uh, yeah, I'll shock myself in case we need double red on turn two. Another Symmetry Sage. Yeah, we could haste it. Opponents on an artifact deck, so they could have Portable Hold to Exile Arcanist. Might want to get immediate value of Arcanist with Reckless Charge, but I'm also not hating the uh, Symmetry Sage plus Reckless Charge line. And then next turn I could just flash back Reckless Charge and deal a ton of damage. Hitting for 9 on turn 2. It's going to be an Aether Spell Bomb as a bounce spell. Opponent passes. And yeah, that probably means we don't want a Reckless Charge. But we can play with fire and play arcanists and uh, sure I guess we'll make them use the spell bomb as opposed to just playing arcanist and passing and then next turn I can also just play symmetry sage assuming they bounced it and flashback charge So just Sage plus Charge in the Graveyard is lethal. So our opponent's just getting attacked from too many angles too quickly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing a 1-mana creature. So this hand might be a little too slow. Opponents could be playing the same deck. Now we are on the play, which kind of helps if we get to untap with Belmor, cast Guidance. That's pretty sweet. And if we find Arcanist, we've got Charge to go with it. So maybe I'm still willing to give this a shot. Turn 1. Do we see a Symmetry Sage or a Soulscar Mage instead? Channeler's not bad. So now if they kill Belmore, I still have a Shaman to enable my card draw spell. I don't think I want a Channeler charge, that seems pretty bad. So let's spell more and pass. And most likely they can kill it here, but always hopeful that they can't. And Channeler, not a wizard, so does not enable wizard's lightning. Soulscar attacks, we'll take it. So maybe they only have a 2 damage burn spell in hand, it's gonna be their own Balmor. Okay, that's fine. So wizard's lightning deals with their copy. And then we can Symmetry Sage first to bump up Belmore a little bit more. Could have also gone for Symmetry Sage plus Reckless Charge. Just attack past Belmore, but I guess it could have absorbed two damage. Unless we, I guess, pump Belmore with the Symmetry Sage's ability. That could have still worked. But now we're setting up for maybe Channeler plus Charge. Opponent with Iteration finds a land. They didn't have a Wizard's Lining last turn, but they could have one now. Their own Symmetry Sage. 
A land would have been good. I could guidance to maybe find one. Or I could just channel her Reckless Charge, which does attack past the opponent's Symmetry Sage, except for Balmor, who can get blocked. So I think Guidance to hit her land drops is acceptable. And then a copy of Guidance works well with our Sage as well. Soulscar Mage, probably not necessary. Would want to find something like a Wizard's Lining here. This charge could come in handy too. So we're attacking for 8. Charge can make it plus 5, 13. So then next turn discharge would just be lethal. Yeah, I guess that's worth it. So they might have to jump. And we've got more creatures alongside Reckless Charge for next turn. So our opponent jumps. Limits the uh, chance of our opponents killing us on the way back. So not hitting my position now. This charge kills Balmor. And consider, so we don't need to fear Wizard's Lightning, so now Symmetry Sage plus Charge should be more than enough. And our opponent explodes, yeah, they know that they're pretty dead. Okay, we're on the play, hands quite promising. Turn 1, Soulscar Mage, turn 2, maybe Symmetry Sage plus Charge, or can get our Arcanist going. And if our opponent's got a 1-drop, then Sage plus Pillar is probably going to be our move. Opponent also blue-red. Passes with 1 mana up. So don't need to fear removal on Symmetry Sage necessarily. And since we picked up another charge, I think I'm okay going Sage plus Charge. Right, they've got to play with Fire for the Soul Scar. Hit for 6. And then a land of the top lets us play Arcanist and give it haste. This charge kills Sage. Alright. Could be in trouble if they've got more removal. Now, Sage plus another charge is tempting. Put the opponent to 6. And then land lets me flash back charge for another 6. And if not, we still have Arcanist left over. Yeah, Symmetry Sage does not mess around. Time for the opponent to unleash their spells with their own Sage. And a play with Fire times 2. Okay, so we're going to be down to two cards in hand. And unlikely to have clean answers to Arcanists. Guidance can go digging pretty deep to maybe find an answer. So the game's not over yet, but at least we've got a bit more life to play with. Opponent kept the card on top, cannot be good for us. And it's going to be a discharge to kill Arcanist. Alright, so we're down to one creature now. Although Wizard's Lightning plus Pillar, that's uh, 5 damage total, so we're getting close to lethal. Another Soul Scar. And Arcanists. Alright. Opponent stays back. Then comes into play tapped. So what's the move? Probably need to kill Arcanist sadly, otherwise that's gonna go off with a Symmetry Sage. And then Soulscar could attack and the opponent may take it.
or they might just feel that they're too far behind and have to take the risk of blocking. And we'll play it after then. Alright, so now I would say, despite being at 6, the opponent's in a pretty comfortable position. Arcanist is scary if they can charge it, just a Ledger Shredder. They might have wanted to switch those up to get to Knife value. Alright, so opponent's got a ton of blockers. And uh, yeah, we've got uh, one creature left, which is not great. I can Reckless Charge Soulscar Mage up to a 5-3 here. So they wouldn't be able to trade for it. Probably trumps with either Symmetry Sage or Shredder. The alternative is Cast Consider, hoping to find an answer to Arcanists. Otherwise they can kill our Soulscar Mage next turn. And just killing a Ledger Shredder here through Reckless Charge doesn't necessarily win us the game. So yeah, I think we consider. Balmore could be okay, but it's gonna be a while before we can cast it and maybe give it haste. Don't think it's good enough. A land means we can still Reckless Charge. And then maybe Den of the Bugbear becomes active next turn. So, sure. Could also put Giganta in hand. Now we'll give uh, Soulscar haste. And they may just jump with a Symmetry Sage now, or still Shredder. Eh, at least her point's top decking, but Arcanist can kill Soulscar Mage. Opponent playing it safe, leaving as many blockers back as possible. And uh, yeah, probably attack with Den now. And their opponent's going to be able to eat a 1 1 with the Soul Scar. Maybe takes 3. Thing that beats putting Gigantha in hand. Oh, they're actually chumping them to stay at a healthier life total. Works for me. Another land of the top, so there's hope. Arcanus get back play with fire. Goes upstairs. Actually wouldn't mind a red land of the top, so we can finish off Sage after it blocks a 1 1. And there it is. Awesome. Yeah, I guess our opponent's even forced to chum block if they don't want to die to this Pillar of Flame. Otherwise, they would be taking 4 down to 2, and Pillar of Flame is lethal. So, never mind what I said about finishing off Symmetry Sage. And it's a tough decision for the opponent, too, here, but they probably need to keep Symmetry Sage alive to give themselves a shot at killing me next turn with a spell of the top. As Symmetry Sage would pair quite nicely with Arcanist, letting them get back another Discharge. So our opponent blocks a Goblin token, and now we can win with our Pillar of Flame. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Only one creature, so hopefully it doesn't die. And then I'm probably gonna shock myself, since we might want access to more red mana with a pathway. Soulscar Mage, I'm happy to play. And then we can keep our uh, Symmetry Sage for next turn, maybe alongside Reckless Charge. Turn to Dreadhorde Butcher. Okay, so if I kill it with a Burn Spell, it should be okay next turn since we trigger Prowess. So I don't have to trade Soulscar Mage for it if I don't want to, plus Pillar of Flame even exiles it so it doesn't trigger to begin with. So we'll set that up. Still want red. So yeah, just go with Pillar, seems safest. And then we get the immediate advantage of Symmetry Sage pumping Soulscar. Still have some very efficient removal spells in hand. 
Croxa to make me discard. It's either Reckless Charge or Play With Fire. I'll go with the Play With Fire here. Considers a free Symmetry Sage and Soulscar trigger, and then now Soulscar plus Reckless Charge represents a ton of damage. Opponent down to 6, and a Wizard's Lightning could be lethal next turn, and our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, hand is great. Turn 1, either Channeler or Sage, let's go with a Channeler, since Sage has kind of pseudo-haste with its ability. Opponent on a life gain deck, and... Uh, yeah, could just play Arcanist for now. Offer the trade, I don't think they'll accept. And against the Lifegain deck, they typically don't have any cheap answers to Arcanist. And then we can go digging with Guidance to hit our land drops. Kill both creatures with Play with Fire, perhaps. Yeah, a couple options here. Could also Symmetry Sage, and then Guidance, pumping both creatures. And get some more uh, Surveil value. And then wait on Play with Fire until next turn. Can still kill a creature that picks up two counters, for instance. And Belmore seems good, especially with Arcanist in play. And do I need Den? Not really. Prefer untapped lands. I'll keep his team vents. These attack. And then we can Guidance again. For value. And a Wizard Slining will keep. And a play with fire will keep. Okay. So, we've got plenty of burn spells to go with Balmor now. So, I'm liking my position. Could have also put play with fire in the graveyard just to get more fuel for Arcanist. But don't think we're gonna struggle with that. Alrighty, so. Playing Balmor does trigger Heliot with the Soul Warden. Probably still worth it to get the extra damage in. I can play with Fire Soul Warden. Symmetry Sage pumping itself. Play with Fire, we'll put in the graveyard now. And then I probably want to keep instant speed removal available in case of a collected company. For now, kill Veteran. And we'll actually have to do the math here to see if we can just kill the opponent straight up. Since we haven't pumped one of our creatures yet with Symmetry Sage, Lining is three Balmor triggers. So yeah, that should be enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Very promising hand. Turn 1 can play a Soulscar Mage, turn 2 Balmor, and then maybe Symmetry Sage plus an instance to go with it right away. Opponent on classic mono red aggro with turn 1 Ringleader. Okay. So, they typically don't have a ton of removal, maybe a Stomp from Bonecrusher. So, Belmore should be safe. And then uh, Soulscar gets to attack. And then want to keep our Wizard's Lining to answer Annex. Opponent could have an explosive Burning Tree Emissary turn here. 
opponent passes. Okay. So now what? Could play Symmetry Sage. Although we don't really want a Wizard Slining, the Ringleader. So maybe I should consider first try and hit my land drop. And then maybe still play Symmetry Sage afterwards, keeping up Wizard Slining. Now let's start here. Another Considerer can go to the Graveyard. And Arcanist we can maybe play later. So I'll just hit for 5. And now that we picked up Arcanists, I might be okay killing a creature in the opponent's turn. As opposed to saving it for the extra triggers. Since we may not draw the land to cast it alongside Arcanist. And uh, yeah, could also consider again if we don't hit a land. Can Pillar of Flame, could Symmetry Sage, plus Pillar of Flame, the Ringleader. And we may not even need Arcanist to cross a finish line. So we have a lot of great options. If we get to untap with Arcanist, it's probably game over with Discharge getting flashed back. So let's just hit for two. And then uh, play Arcanist. And most likely present Lethal next turn. Still haven't seen the haste creature that they uh, chose with a ringleader. So there's still a surprise in store for us. Torbran does not have haste, just a 2-4. Alright, we drew a land. So I'm assuming we can kill our opponents. Symmetry Sage, step 1. Discharge, step 2. The first one can go upstairs, the second one can kill Torbran. Target Arcanists. Although the Belmore trigger would have been enough for Arcanist to flash back and discharge. And we can pump Belmore itself now. And that's 15 trample damage coming across. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is quite promising. Symmetry Sage alongside Arcanist. No real interaction, so we'll need to draw into it with Mentor's Guidance and Double Consider. And it looks like the mirror match. Okay, Belmore's good too. Could already Mentor's Guidance here. Um, and then wait to find a way to give Arcanist haste so we don't expose it to sorcery speed removal. Can get behind that, or we can play a Balmor. And then next turn Guidance, and it's unlikely for them to kill both our wizards. Yeah, we'll play a Balmor first. Since we hit our land drop for the turn, and then we can maybe find one with Guidance. Right, Balmor down. Spire Bluff is good. So, still hesitant to play Arcanist without giving it haste first. So we'll uh, Guidance. Trigger Symmetry Sage. And try and find a Reckless Charge or a Wizard Slining is good too. And another Symmetry Sage. Yeah, that should be good. We have Double Consider to keep enabling it. So now the question is, do I... Keep up Wizard's Lightning, which can kill the opponent's Symmetry Sage or Arcanist if they try and give it haste. Or I could tap out for another Symmetry Sage. I think I'll keep up Wizard's Lightning. The drawback of not killing Sage right away is that they could play their own Lightning at a discount. They've got another Sage instead. But I don't want to keep myself vulnerable to a hasty Arcanist, so... Ah, Belmore. So that's probably what we take out here. Wizard's Lining, and then... We get to untap. Play another Symmetry Sage. 
consider can consider firsts. Although I'm not gonna give Arcanist haste this turn, given our current hand. But uh, yeah, we can still consider now if we want to. And a mentor's guidance looks good. Hit for three, and then the question is if we guidance now or play Sage, keep up consider to grow Sage to maybe trade or uh, play with fire if needed. And our opponents can feel too comfortable going for the Arcanists plus uh, haste play in case we have more interaction here. Uh, they're gonna Alchemist Gambit to take an extra turn. Okay, haven't seen that one before. Do they have a way to counter the trigger, maybe? Ten of the bugbear, I don't need. Draw one anyway. Okay, so another turn coming up here. Discharge goes face. And that to another burn spell. Play with fire, it's one short. So they were counting on their Symmetry Sage surviving, and our opponent loses to their own Alchemist Gambit. Well, it's definitely an interesting addition that I haven't seen anyone else try before, but it did not work out for them here. So yeah, we got to see our blue Red Wizards deck in action, and yeah, Balmore was quite impressive, even saw an opponent play it. So it's certainly a nice addition for the overall archetype, being a two-mana wizard to enable all the wizard synergies, while also pumping Arcanist to get back two-mana cards, similar to Symmetry Sage and Reckless Charge, just as a ton of synergy overall. Now, there are still a few flex slots in this deck, like we're playing the one of Fading Hope and Pillar of Flame, and two copies of Dragon's Rage Channeler, but I've also seen people play with Delver of Secrets as another one-mana wizard, and Ancestral Anger as another cantrip that plays well with Dreadhorde Arcanist. You could also play Sprite Dragon at two mana, but now I prefer Balmore, as it can enable Wizard Slining and Mentor's Guidance. But if you don't like Mentor's Guidance, you could also play Expressive Iteration instead, so there's still a few choices you can make, but the core of the deck is a well-oiled machine. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.